All right, I'm going to do a Polar Star install. This is the newest revision, I guess the third one, I guess. This is a selector plate for a GMP. The gun is a GMP. It's the old aim top gearbox. It doesn't sound too great, especially because it's the gears. It's not anything to do with the shim, it's just the gears. Um, so I kind of looked over this, and when I bought my Polar Star, I didn't get, you know, a little explanation of everything in here. Uh, it's just really nice to have the page that says, you know, what your RE, FA, DN, DP, all this stuff is. And when I turn over to this page, this kind of surprised me. Uh, maintenance after 25,000 rounds. Um, remove the front mounting screw below the air nozzle, remove any attachments mounted above the, the nozzle, unscrew the air nozzle, banjo fitting, basically seven steps. And, you know, when I got my Polar Star, I was under the impression that you wouldn't have to do things like that, but I think that's just listed in there just because, um, just to cover basis, I think that maybe possibly to go past 25,000 uh, pretty easily, so... I wouldn't doubt that I've been past that number or close to it by now online. One thing I've noticed different is there is uh, some kind of switch here. It's very tiny, and you have to be very delicate. Um, I noticed if you you know if you press down on the selector plate and you slide it, the switch actually uh, moves up and down a little bit. So that's kind of scary because um, I've you know I've seen on video or heard of a lot of people breaking their switches, not to the Polar Star, to other boards. And that kind of, you know, I see the switch moving up and down and not the actual press button. That's kind of a scary thing. But uh, I noticed that they've cut this out here, kind of like my uh, Scar H SSR, that it has a hole there that they cut for the selector plate. Well, this seems to have it now, too. Uh, maybe because, you know, you've got other guns that have dual-sided uh, selectors, so... Um, maybe that's part of the scarish design, who knows. So, another thing to note is the selector plate is a little bit uh, wide up here. I'm not sure why. I think they want it to press against the gearbox, or excuse me, the body. So as it goes through here. That's my guess. Um, we've got too long of a trigger pull here. Semi is pretty long. Pull out is the same thing, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and fix that up too so we get a nice speed trigger install. Um, what else can I say? Uh, it's pretty nice. This is what it came with is the sticker. Um, Elite Force. Some kind of Elite Force thing. Uh, Polar Star Precision Airsoft Components. I guess you could put that on the gun right there if you wanted to. And here's the FCU. Uh, it seems like it's bagged in there. It's not coming out. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut this open carefully here. If it will let me. It seems that it's trying to prevent that from happening. There we go. Alright, so pull this out, and there it is. Now, you should have no problem putting this in the stock. I will probably deans this for a LiPo battery, is my guess. She'll be no big issue. It's pretty easy to do. Okay, so right away, all we need to do is take apart the other gun. Here's the pistol grip that I'm going to use. It's another duplicate because this one has a hole in it. The reason is because before this grip comes in at a little bit of an angle compared to other grips. And at the same time, uh, the gearbox, because of this line right here and the gearbox, there would be a gap here and it'd create build pinion issues. Uh, so you can actually pull this off here and that was on the old gearbox. There's no hole there now. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and just take that right off. So a couple other things I'm going to do is on the new pistol grip, 
Um, I'm going to insulate the inside so you don't get this scratched, of course. You don't want that, you know, messed up. And over time, you have to have it replaced. Actually, it's not even necessary to put an end cap for the pestle grip. Maybe just that just won't be done. Hmm. Not sure yet. And this is the aim top stuff, so I'm just going to take this off. Slide out your aim top motor. Looks like the spring got stuck down there. Kind of a first time for me, I've never seen that happen. Oh, it's cut so that it'd be perfect meshed. That's why there's no markings on the pinion. Because I always set it up for a perfect mesh so it doesn't make any damage to it. Yeah, if you look down the uh, down in here to the gearbox, um, you can see that it's off at an angle, and at the same time, it doesn't mesh completely. Is why this has a hard time going in. Um, but I guess we won't have any of those issues anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo this. The reason why these fuckers have to in here. Okay, so, what better? Anything that it can pull back on? Nope. It's all the way back. Okay. Set that to the side. And awesome. Now before we put this in, we have to work on the trigger. Now I did a trigger video before. So I don't think this will be necessary, but basically just go ahead and take out these two screws right here to just the trigger. Seems that I need a smaller screwdriver. And basically you can make this into a speed trigger. Remember which way your screws go. Biggest one here, smallest one there. Pull this off. Get access right to your uh, this seems to be made pretty nicely, but it's coated with something, this trigger. And here's the spring. And then basically you can see everything here you need to. Um, the only thing you need to do is make sure that you can press the button sooner. So the way these things push the button is through the top here, the top of this. So you could add some... Uh, space to the front of it right here, the very top, and it would click in sooner. Uh, you can add some space in the back here, right here, so you would move forward sooner if you want to do that. You could go either way, it's up to you how you want to do that. Um, you could put a spacer in there, uh, right here to the back that I was talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and take that out. You could do that with the speed trigger because it has a screw. And if you want to um, have your safety work, let's see what here, I'll go to safety. And you can see right here that it moves a little bit too much. Uh, you can add material to the front of this right here, or you can add material 
to right here to this uh, moving wheel. Moving wheel right here. Now, no matter what you do, you want to make sure that you test everything. Um, you can see here you couldn't add material right now to the front of this because it hit it bump into the trigger. So you'd have to add to the top of that, and you have to make sure that this can uh, bypass it. These are all little tweaks to make a good trigger. So we're going to bump forward to that. Okay, after testing, don't worry, I didn't use any silicone oil or anything, but after testing, uh, just moving stuff out of the way. After all this testing and gluing and stuff, I have got it down to what I think is perfect. This is the trigger pull right here. And then uh, if you push safety, should be uh, stiff. It's pretty darn stiff. Now I'm going to test to see if it actually shoots. Um, let's go ahead and put the plate back on after I show how I did all this because there was a lot of modifying I did and probably needs to be on camera so people understand. Okay, first things first, I had to take off the other plate because the I couldn't see how short the uh, pull here was from the top. There's some super glue on it and we'll see that in a second. Second thing, there is two pieces of electrical tape right here poked a hole so that it could hold the uh, trigger in place. There was no up and down movement like this. So I prevented that. And then on the back of the trigger here, you can see I shaved down all that area. The reason is because if you compare these two, this is thicker and it would hit into this thing right here. Um, I also shaved right here, or excuse me, right here, slightly off the top because that would bump into the switch right there. Um, so you can see I super glued a piece of polyacental, I think it is called, I'm not sure. And then there is a, um, a thing, a stopper here for the safety, which was super glued on to it. And I think that's polycarbonate. So you put this in here, and right away you can see that it almost hits the uh, switch. I'm going to zoom up here. So it fits in there uh, perfectly. And then, uh, so we'll go ahead and close it up right now. It's also easier to install if you take off this piece uh, that goes across, this big metal piece. So, for me at least, it was. So, go ahead and put that in. And you want to be careful not to snag your wires right there, especially since this is brand new. The GMP plate is kind of crappy. Um, it can break easy if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, it's not very thick right in this area, right here. So you got to be careful of that it's uh, not very good plastic for some reason. I don't think I'll need to use it, but if I do, then it'll be perfect drop-in. Should be easy to do. Okay, so now you can hear that click. You don't hear a click. That's the bumping into the um, safety bar thing. So let's go ahead and plug this up. I also deans this already, so that's ready to go. Plug this in here and check it. Make sure you're careful, you don't want to snap this thing. Alright, and plug it in here. If I can get it in. Alright. Got auto on right now. Let's 
Let's go to semi and see what happens. Safety. So you can hear it still shoot. You have to pull it really, really tight. So I'm gonna file it, sand it down just a little bit. That white piece of area, and then just leave it on a semi. See, this is full auto. Semi seems to be working fine. So you can see uh, all that trigger stuff is going to work. So I'm just going to open it up and do that because see what would happen if I didn't test and I put the body together. I'd be very agitated to have to take it apart, you know, and redo that part. So it's very easy to do this. Um, just undo this here. Undo this. Pull this off. And pull this out. And so what I'm going to sand down is this white area, just slightly, so that it can't uh, push right on that button. I did look at if the safety bar in this had the uh, perfect depth, and they do, so, or perfect amount of uh, length here to block the trigger, and they do. Um, if I was to put a little bit more, the problem would be the safety bar can't engage up or come down and get stuck because uh, I could tell easily. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to sand a little bit more on this white. Okay, so after a couple minutes of sanding, now comes the test again. I'm pulling the trigger as hard as I can. There's no response. You can see that right there. No up and down movement really for the trigger. See, look at that. So it looks like a perfect install. All right, so I'm gonna unhook the Dean's battery and install into here. So. First things first, that's a little bit of a tight fit down there. This looks like it won't make it. So I'm going to unhook it. And then go ahead and just install. Now if we have any meshing issues, I'll have to shave them down. This looks like a complete drop-in. I mean, look at this. like a perfect drop-in without any issues. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start pinning this in place. And where are the pins? Here's one. Sorry, I gotta try to get a view on this. The as you try to put this in here, it feels like there's resistance. It's the wires. It's kind of pushing against it. There we go. Okay, holding it in place, and it looks like it's gonna go straight in. That would be awesome because you know how much of a pain in the ass it is to take this apart. Yeah, the pin's not moving. That's good. Take this part and carve the areas for the pins and stuff like that. I always hate doing that. I'm going to put this in this way. If I remember correctly, it was this way for this rifle, though, so. Seems like a tight fit on this one. Seems to be going in, though. This one. All right, to avoid scratching the receiver, see there's some grease right there, but I'm going to avoid scratching the receiver. Doesn't 
seem to be moving. It is moving. It's just having a little bit of a difficulty. There we go. All right, it's in place. It is solid, tight fit. That is so awesome. Now to see if the uh, safety is going to work or not. Actually, let's get the back screwed on first. Uh, I should check it first. Check it first because I have to take it apart for some reason. Sometimes there's little fittings and stuff. Alright, I can't get this in because I'm not looking at it right. Never force anything, that's for sure. Alright. It's not like this is going to go anywhere. Look at the trigger pull on that. Safety. See, you can hit it. That's why I check. All right, so a little bit more sanding down again. Uh, just take it apart from this point and sand it down lightly. All right, I'm down to this point. And what I did was heat shrink this right here. And at the same time, I put some uh, Velcro in there so it's not moving too much. Uh, helps protect the wire right there. This hose thing, whatever you want to call it. All right. Uh, everything seems to be okay. But I can tell. So let's go ahead and take it apart real quick on the back here to get to the... battery let's put the pin in on this side just to not forget about it all right so shorty let's see if you work There's plenty of room in the back here for the battery. And there you go. So there's a Polar Star installed for a shorty. Pretty badass, huh? And this actually does function to open. And here she is, Polar Starred. There's actually a little cat underneath here, but this is nice. Um, so there it is. Completely done. Needs to get an end cap here, uh, connection for a hose, and then um, you're ready, pretty much ready to go.